Allie, pick the easiest problem up here right now. Why is number four easier than number one, Hallie? It doesn't have a second fraction. Elise, how do I do number four? We take six plus 14. Yeah, I really just take six plus 14. Because I, I, uh, before we do this, I want you to write six plus 14 plus 1 half. Because that's that same problem, OK? When I look at it like that, it's more obvious. But if only one of them has a fraction, you really just have to add the whole numbers. And the fraction just kind of stays behind it. OK, and Hallie said number one was the easiest. Why are really number one, two, and three all pretty easy? Lily, why are they all pretty easy? Uh, besides number two, why are number one and three both pretty easy? Yeah, they already have a common denominator. So Dom, tell me what I would do here. OK, so 3 plus 4 is 7. What's my denominator? 5. Five. I'm slowing Dom down because he likes to jumble it all up here and then spit out an answer. OK, what else do I have to do? Okay, re, okay, change this to a mixed number. What would that be as a mixed number? One and two fifths. Is that my final answer? That is a common wrong answer. Okay, and Dom said it wasn't my answer. But why do you think that's a common wrong answer, Brendan? Because they forget to add the whole numbers that are in the problem. Yeah, they did the hard part. They forgot about the easy stuff. We have to add 12 plus 5. What's 12 plus 5? 17 plus 1 and 2 fifths. Yeah, so I'm going to write it like this. 18 and 2 fifths. You guys are doing this as I am. Okay, but again, I don't feel like we probably struggle with those ones right now. Are there any on here? Let's go down and do number 6, yeah. Okay, number 6. First thing we have to do is find a common denominator. Ethan, what can I turn a 7 and a 5 into? Um, uh, if you can't think of something, you can always multiply them together. Um, 35. 35. OK, so now let's show that work. I'm going to set this one up vertically. I just like, I think it's more visually helpful. So 3 and 1 seventh, 4 and 3 fifths is the original problem. Ethan wants to get them both to 35. So I'm going to do times 5 times 5 times 7 times 7. So I'd have 3 and 5 30 fifths and 4 21 30 fifths. I always include the whole number when I work my way across. Why do you think I go ahead and rewrite it? So I don't forget about it. That's the only reason. Okay, It's not that it's hard. I could take 3 plus 4 and just go ahead and put a 7 down at the bottom so I don't forget about it. I always just carry it over so that I don't forget that it's there. Now that I have it like that, Leah, what do I do? Okay, 5 plus 21 is 26. My denominator stays the same. Now I need to check and see if I can do what? Reduce. Reduce. Does 2 go into both of them? No. Why not? Because 35 is odd. 35 is odd. Does 3 go into them? No. What's 2 plus 6? 8. 8. So both of them add up to 8. So 3 doesn't go into either of them. Um, think about like 26. 4 doesn't go. 5 doesn't go. No, 6 doesn't no. go. Sometimes like 3, like 13 is one, like goes into 65. 13 times 5 is 65. So be careful with that. I always look at the, like the number, one of the numbers and just kind of go through the factors. 26 doesn't have many, it's just 2 and 13. But sometimes 13 goes into 
into something that ends in a 5, but not 35. So that is simplest form. OK. Um, let's see. Flip all the way over. Is that page 12? Yeah, page 12, but it's not numbered. Here, I'll have to get there. Hold on just a second. It's the one after, whoo, subtracting mixed numbers. Yep, 6-6. Six six. In our old book, it was chapter 6, lesson 6. How is subtracting mixed numbers different from adding mixed numbers? Brennan? Yeah, it's not any different. Besides, all we do is subtract. Okay, it's you do it exactly the same. Sometimes we have to regroup, which is just a thing of subtraction. So I'm going to rewrite five and two sevenths minus four and two thirds. Meyer, what's a denominator that seven and three can both go into? Twenty-one. So I'm going to put um, so times three to make that one twenty-one times seven. We have 5 and 6 21sts, 4 and 14 21sts. Dawson, can I take 6 minus 14? No. So what do I have to do? Yeah, so I have to regroup. So I have to take one hole away from there. So the 5 would become a 4. Now, when I add one hole to what I already have, remember, one hole I can represent a million different ways. I could represent one hole as 2 over 2, 7 over 7, 12 over 12. What hole do I want to use for this problem, Elise? What hole do I want to use? Meyer? 21. Yeah, 21 over 21, because I, I need that common denominator. Because I have to add it to what's already there. So I'm going to write it like this. What's 6 21sts plus 21 21sts, Brendan? Uh, 27. 27. So I'm just going to write that up here. So I know I have 27 over 21 minus 14 over 21. Tatum, what do I do now? Okay, 27 minus 14 would be 13 over 21. What's 4 minus 4? Zero. Do I need to put my whole number as zero? Nope. So that is final answer. I want you guys to try number three. Try number three. It's not a regrouping one. If you get that one done, I want you to go down and try number seven. So after you work number three, go right below it and work seven. So you're working three and seven. I'm going to mark off my number four and just write problem seven here so I don't have to scroll down. Three is the easier of the two. Seven's a little bit trickier. Yeah, just those two. Mm 
Number one and number seven are about as hard as these problems get. That's, they don't get, if those make sense, then you guys are good to go. Regrouping is about the only thing that makes these a little bit challenging. If you have, do you have like a As your final answer? Yes. Yeah, they could they could give you an a uh, not perfect answer as a part of the problem. So like 14 and 5 thirds, they could give you that as one of the numbers that you're starting with. Because yeah. as long as it's not your final answer. Take that a, uh, mixed number and then add it to that. I wouldn't do that till the end. Okay. I would wait till the very end. Do all your math and then fix it at the end. Because you might need it to be 5 thirds if it's like subtraction. Yeah. They might have given it you that way to make it easier. Okay, number three, walk me through. Aubrey, what can I do first? Times one and three by two. Okay, because you're trying to get a common denominator. So that would be seven and six eighteenths minus four and one eighteenth. Okay, Jake, take over. What would I do next? Now that I have a common denominator, what can I do? Which is? Over 18. Now what, Emmy? Which is? 3. 3 and 5 eighteenths. Next one, common denominator. Tatum, what's my common denominator for number 7? I rewrote it up there, but yours is below this. What did you say? 16. How'd you get 16? Did you do number 7? Did I copy the problem wrong? No, it's one Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. Okay. Lily, what's a common denominator for 3 and 6? What'd you say? Six. six, yes. Could I make them both 12? Yes. Could I make them both 18? Yes. Which one is the best one? Six. six. The lowest one is always the best, just because it makes our life easier when we're doing the rest of the math. Would you want to divide down? Or no? Like, you can get six to three, but would you want no, to get a decimal? Yeah, most time you would get a decimal on the top if you do that. OK, so let's do times two times two. So 10 and 2 sixths minus 4 and 5 sixths. Ethan, can I take 2 minus 5? Uh, no. Nope. So what can I do? Um. In subtraction, if I can't take uh, 2 minus 5, two plus, I have to regroup. So I'm taking away from 10. What's it going to become? A 9. A 9. And if we're just doing decimals, we just add that one whole as a one next to it. With fractions, we have to add it as a fraction. Hallie, what whole am I going to add on to that 2 6? OK, why? Because it has the Yeah, because I need the denominators to be the same. So now I have 8. 2 plus 6 is 8 6. So I have 9 and 8 6 minus 4 and 5 6. Leah, what's next? OK, 8 minus 5 is 3. OK, 9 minus 4 is 5. Is 5 and 3 6 the good final answer? 5 and 1 half. Good job, Jake. 5 and 1 half. Again, a lot of this is review. This is the stuff we tend to forget from fifth grade to sixth grade. And we don't do a lot of it in fifth grade. Does that make sense? Yes? OK. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Did you divide the bottom by 2? Or sorry, divide them both by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. OK, so then you should have gotten a higher number. So you went to 18, which is fine. So you would have had 10. So to get to 18, you would have had 6 18ths. 
and here you would have had 4 and times 3, 15 eighteenths, okay, right? That's what you had? Okay, and then when we regroup, that's a 9. What did you add on as your whole? Okay, that's correct. So 18 eighteenths, so that would have been 24 eighteenths. What did you get when you took 24 minus 15? Okay, that's, then that's where you goofed up. When you regroup, you add it to what's already there. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, um, you guys have about 13 minutes. What you're going to do first is the one problem that I promised you you'd be doing today. One surface area, one volume problem. And I'm going to give you your homework. There is a front and a back. You only have to do the front. It's not this, not the packet. Yep. Okay.